Hello everyone and welcome to this new video about level design. In this episode, we're going to talk about two major concepts for procedural generation, deterministic versus stochastic processes. So in our previous episodes about procedural generation, we discussed how this concept was about using controlled randomness to create data on the fly at runtime. This was actually a bit of a simplification to the most common case. In truth, procedural generation is just about making data dynamically from an algorithm, rather than loading it from memory. But the algorithm that generates this data may rely on more or less randomness. When a process is completely fixed and doesn't contain any random parts, we say that it is deterministic. In other words, given the same inputs, deterministic processes always run exactly the same and result in the same outcome. On the other hand, processes that do use randomness are said to be stochastic. With stochastic processes, you may get different results even though you use the same inputs. Of course, the neat thing is that there is actually a spectrum between fully deterministic and fully stochastic, and that's usually where procedural generation works, with its in-between controlled randomness. Now, as we said before, in a video game, procedural generation can have two main goals. For game developers, it's a way of reducing the number of assets to make and to reduce the required amount of memory. And for players, it introduces more replay value by offering different challenges each time. While it's clear that replay value mostly comes from randomness, and that's actually why games like Rogue in 1980 or the way more recent Minecraft worked as much as they did, you'll notice that auto-making assets and reducing the memory footprint of your app doesn't inherently require randomness. Typically, consider the creation of a landscape, or a tree. In both cases, there could be situations where you don't want to get a different result each time, you just want to avoid storing all this 3D data somewhere on disk, and rather generate it only when needed. So you could devise algorithms that take in particular inputs and then run deterministically to get you your result. By the way, you might remember we discussed Conway's Game of Life in our last procedural generation episode. This is an example of a deterministic algorithm, since given an initial state and a set of rules, we can describe the exact evolution of the grid of cells at each generation with perfect certainty. But we could easily turn this algorithm into a stochastic version, for example by giving it several rules for the same situation, and having it choose randomly between all of these. But okay then, when should you use deterministic processes, and when is it better to use stochastic ones? Well, the rule of thumb is usually that deterministic processes are easier to understand and follow as they run, and they offer predictability. You can try and execute your algorithm with some input data and expect a specific result in the end, which is great for tuning or debugging your process while in development. Stochastic processes are better whenever you want variations, and a degree of uncertainty in your output, obviously, which is why they are at the heart of many procedural generation techniques. Nowadays, they are about as easy to code because we have many tools in our computers for getting random numbers, but they may be harder to debug since you can't exactly forecast the results. Nevertheless, they are a great way to compute diversity and to add realism to our games, because a lot of processes in real life are stochastic, so we are very used to this randomness all around us, and it can really help make a game more believable. Now, of course, there are a plethora of techniques for implementing both deterministic and stochastic processes, so let's have a look at a few of them. And first off, let's talk about stochastic processes. Something crucial to remember is that most of the time, the tools we use to get random numbers on a computer don't really produce pure randomness. Instead, they are what we call pseudo-random generators. They actually generate number sequences that start from a somewhat random point, but then move forward in a logical and predictable order. That's why to truly get random results each time you run your game, you have to set this start point, called the seed, to something different each time, so as to get different number sequences and simulate randomness. Once you have those pseudo-random numbers, you can combine them in various ways to get a stochastic process. Most notably, you have two well-known and easy-to-understand stochastic processes used in game dev. The random walk, where you move step-by-step step in a random direction to gradually build a chain of points, 
that's typically interesting to make simple city maps, but it's also used in physics to model movements in liquids or gases, or in maths for population dynamics. And the Poisson process that can create random but pretty well-distributed points. This is actually the tool I've used in my RTS tutorial series to find random positions for my units when you select a group of them and ask them to move somewhere on the map. Ok, and now let's talk about deterministic processes. They basically come in two flavors. Either you write an algorithm with deterministic transitions, meaning that at any step of your process, your current state fully specifies the next state, or you use a stochastic algorithm, but you force randomness. Some examples of deterministic algorithms include a basic if-else scheme, where you manually determine the state transitions with a fixed logic, or the else systems, for example, which, just like the game of life, use an initial state and evolution rules to create tree or network-like structures. L systems are often used to make trees or maps in games, and if you're curious, there's actually a link in the description to a little Python program I made to implement them, as well as an article I wrote on that topic. Finally, forcing randomness is the idea of playing around with a stochastic process's random number generation so that it always produces the same sequence, therefore making the process itself deterministic. So, by seeding a random number generator and setting its start point to a specific value, you effectively force the upcoming sequence of numbers, and so they're not that random anymore. To sum up, procedural generation can rely either on deterministic or stochastic processes, depending on the predictability or variability you need. And there are lots of algorithms in each category that you should definitely dive into if you're interested in this domain. But anyway, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial about level design and procedural generation, and that you've learned a few things about deterministic and stochastic processes. If you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And of course, don't hesitate to leave a comment with your own ideas for future level design tutorials. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and take care.